Theodor zu Gutenberg may not necessarily be the sort of politician you'd want to cozy up with. At public appearances, the economics minister is always friendly, like here at this power station near Cologne. But he's never actually chummy. Not even during the election campaign, when everyone else is. <laughs> Although he belongs to Bavaria's Christian Social Union, he also campaigns on behalf of its bigger sister, the Christian Democrats. Polls now put him ahead of Chancellor Angela Merkel in the popularity stakes. That's down to his honest, hard-working image as a politician who keeps his head in a crisis and is determined to get the economy back on track. He himself says his job is to serve the German electorate. We have to be able to face the competition. Everyone else is busy. No one out there is waiting for our election to be over or until we've sorted out new coalitions. So we have to keep working hard up until the very last minute, ladies and gentlemen. Captains of industry tend to like zu Gutenberg, mainly because he rejects the idea of heavily regulated markets and isn't always trying to tell business what to do. What he has going for him is that he's plain speaking and he has definite ideas, and that's what German industry needs. It depends on how you present things. And with Mr. zu Gutenberg, we have a master of presentation. He's poised, objective and dedicated. And he gets to the point. Zu Gutenberg is exactly what the conservatives need right now. They say they stand for capitalism with a human face, and he is that face. But other politicians feel they also fit that bill. Like Jürgen Rüttgers, state premier of Germany's largest state, North Rhine-Westphalia. <laughs> In Scandinavia, they have three royal families and a president to do the same job I'm doing. <laughs> Rutgers doesn't like having to take a back seat, and he's not the only one. Chancellor Merkel and CDU General Secretary Ronald Pofalla are surrounded by self-styled economics experts. Many of them maintained a high profile during the financial crisis, and they're all fond of the limelight. But in the run-up to the election, they're all obeying the Chancellor's request to avoid provocative statements. No one wants to rock the boat at this stage. Right now, this is the sort of image the party wants to project. An efficient economics minister bustling around Washington. Zu Gutenberg's trip to the States in spring might have been arranged for the benefit of the cameras, but if anyone can pull it off, he can. Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg is the perfect political showman, and therefore the conservatives' best weapon during the election campaign. But he's quick to stress that he's nobody's fool. He comes from a family that prides itself on independent thinking. His great-great-uncle was in the German resistance to the Nazi regime, and the family has always believed in standing up for its principles, even when those principles clash with personal ambitions. Mr. Zu Gutenberg, how much have you been influenced by your family? Well, I couldn't really say. All I can say is that it's important to be independent-minded and to have the courage of one's convictions. And one should always stick to one's principles and not compromise whichever way the wind is blowing. It's an attitude that goes down well with voters, like these in central Bonn. Zu Gutenberg stuck to his principles in the Opel case, maintaining that the company should accept bankruptcy rather than a rescue package made up of taxpayers' money. My colleagues in the Bundestag and I have often heard Berlin suddenly say, oh, another two or three billion is neither here nor there. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who can say that sort of thing at a time when we are responsible for hundreds of billions, anyone who can maintain that these sort of figures are neither here nor there, that person is committing a crime against future generations and pulling the ground from under our feet. They're pulling the ground from under our feet, ladies and gentlemen. Zu Gutenberg is a godsend for the Conservatives as the election approaches. They're making the most of him, and he's rising willingly to the occasion. His campaigning skills are beyond dispute. But even his supporters say he still has to prove himself as minister.